How do you maximize performance with your sales force? My name is Anthony Garcia, and I'm the host of the Catapulting Commissions podcast. Join me every week as we discuss topics such as performance or improving retention. And we do so by interviewing some of the top sales professionals and entrepreneurs around the world. Now, let's enjoy the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Catapulting Commissions podcast show. I'm your host, Anthony Garcia. Now, today we're going to start the show in a little different format. If you haven't heard yet, I encourage you to look me up on social media, get in the loop, get in the know. Catapulting Commissions, the book is live. It's on its path to becoming an international bestseller. We just released it. By the time you're hearing this show, I would like to believe that it has hit the international bestseller list. You can catch that at anthonypgarcia.com or follow me on any of my social media links, and you'll watch that progress as we progress to achieving the ranks of international bestseller. But the reason I'm sharing that with you is I want to read some of the reviews that came on Catapulting Commissions. Now, you can get this on Amazon right now, or you can also go to anthonypgarcia.com slash book, and uh, I'll have that link in the show notes for you. But some of the reviews have come in, and it's really, really exciting as an author to see your message spread. And even if you don't like my book, read it, tell me. I'd love to hear about it. But some of the reviews. Shemaya David, while written specifically about sales goals, I find that almost everything in this book is translatable to any personal goal in any field. Cameron Nasmada, Sales Simplified, breaks down processes and practices that are often overlooked. The personal touch has really bridged the gap between personal life and business, recommended for both entry-level and experienced sales professionals. From the United Kingdom, Rob Llewellyn. Unlike other books that were written years ago, Catapulting Commissions considers the new 2020 decade we are now in, or we are now live and working. If you sell, whether you own the business or not, reading this book should be a no-brainer. Thanks, Rob. All right, so again, real quick, jump online, pick up a copy. If you're looking for a audio version, you can search the Audible directory, Catapulting Commissions there. Also, also again, you can link on my website and find that as well. All right, today's show is titled, Why Your Brilliant Ideas Fail. Now, let's think about that for a second. Today's show is going to talk to you, the sales leader, the sales manager, the entrepreneur, the executive. If you're like me, and I suspect if you're listening to this show, we have a similar background. You, at times, come up with some of the most brilliant ideas, whether it's in terms or of retention. If you're trying to retain and develop your sales force, I'm sure there's times where you have brilliant ideas that come to mind. If you're recruiting, your interviewing strategies or, or your active recruiting strategies, you have brilliant ideas that come to mind. Or when it comes to negotiating or closing the sale, we all have these brilliant ideas that come to mind. Now ask yourself this question, how often do you have a brilliant idea that doesn't come to life? How often do you have some idea that could be a game changer, but it never materializes? How come? What is happening in the background in your life that's preventing you from bringing these brilliant ideas to life? Is it a skill issue? Do you not have the skills necessary to bring your idea to life? Is it a will issue? Are you not willing to put in the hard work or the extra effort to bring your idea to life? Okay, I doubt it's either one of those. The number one challenge that highly productive and highly impactful sales professionals have is they say these two words all the time. I can, I can, I can. Hey, can you launch this new product? I can. Hey, can you hit some extra numbers this quarter? I can. Hey, can you come up with a new brilliant way to motivate the sales force? I can. And while that answer might be true, because anyone who has that I can mentality or I can do mentality, they typically develop a level of confidence that gives them the skill set to 
execute on those I can moments. Here's where it gets challenging. We are really good. When I say we, I'm talking about us, the sales leaders and sales managers. We are really good from zero to 90%. If I have an idea that I want to increase the average commission on my team by $10,000 for the year, and I put a plan in place and I, I have an execution plan in place, I'm really good at getting that plan from zero to 90%. Heck, if I have a new training idea or training philosophy that I want to implement with my team on a weekly basis, again, I'm really good at zero to 90%. That means I can get the idea up. I can even put the idea out there. I can get the idea moving. But sometimes I find that finishing that idea or finishing that task becomes a challenge. It's not a skill issue. It's not that I don't have that skill, and it's not that you don't have the skill to bring that project to life. And it's not a will issue, because you, a high-performing sales professional, you are already, by listening to this show, you're already willing to do the extra steps to achieve greatness, the extra steps to hit your sales goal. So it's not a will, it's not a skill issue. What is it? We're overworked. We take on it too much. Every idea that I've had for the past 12 months, I've looked at my ideas, I put my ideas down, and I have a note-taking app where I just, anytime I have an idea, whether it's regarding my sales team, whether it's regarding a customer, whether it's regarding one of the reps on my team, uh, or if it, was a, if it was relationship to the book or the brand or something I want to add it to a keynote speech, I go to the same section. I add it in my notes, right? I voice record my notes, dictates it out, adds everything in. How do I get that from my phone, from my notes, to life? Okay. I'm good from zero to 90. I'm really bad at the last 10%. Here's a simple answer. Outsource the last 10%. Really simple. We're going to talk about four different ways that that 10% area of error is preventing you from achieving greatness in your sales goals, from achieving greatness in your position of sales leadership, okay? So let's talk about that 10% and how do you overcome it? Let's say my idea is I wanna give productive, active feedback to every sales rep on every week, okay? Now, as a sales leader and a sales manager, you should already be doing this, but is it formalized? Is your organization expecting some letter, an email, a memo to them? Are you delivering that concept to them? Okay. If the answer is no, right, we have to put something in place. So I know for me, I want to deliver quality, consistent feedback to my team. And I'm pretty honest with them. After any time I'm with somebody in my organization, when I leave that person, I'm really clear. Hey, I think this is going great. I think this is going bad, or I think this could be uh, areas for improvement. I always ask, hey, how's your job satisfaction? What do you need from me, right? And I, I, I create this open dialogue, and that's great. And when I leave, I want to send an email to recap that, okay? How do I outsource that? Really simple. One, audio record your email. Dictate your email. Hire a virtual assistant. You can find millions of them online for a relatively affordable price. Hey, proofread my email, send it back to me, and then I'm gonna send it off. Because the idea of me sitting in front of my computer and typing an email, honestly, that's, I'm not wired that way. And I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm really bad at wanting to sit in front of my computer and type emails all day. I'm great at sitting and recording emails. I'm great at sitting and talking, but to sit there and write those out, not so good. So find that 10% for whatever your project is that you're holding you back or something that you want to bring to life. I just use that as a simple analogy. I think everyone listening to this show can relate to. But what in your daily, weekly task can you outsource? What's that 10% that's holding your brilliant idea back? Okay, Outsource it or delegate it. And delegating is a little bit different as, as you're building somebody. And that leads to my second point. So if I'm outsourcing it, Typically, it's a third-party person, someone who doesn't have a vested interest in this new project. Or I can partner with somebody on my brilliant ideas and projects. Have you ever noticed that 
in your if you work for an organization and there's doing like a new product launch or a new initiative, there's usually a team put together to launch that initiative. There's a team put together to present that initiative, right? Two brains are better than one, three are better than two, et cetera, et cetera. Eventually you might get too big and it becomes a little challenging. I don't know, and I haven't done the research to say what that fine number is of how many brains is, is exceptional for, uh, for bringing an idea to life. But what I am saying is this, find someone to partner with. If you have a brilliant idea, let's say my new brilliant idea is I have a new way to create purified water in a reusable water bottle that's attractive, effective, it's connected to the internet, it tells me how much water I drink, it has radio attached to it, it has all the bells and whistles, right? And this is my project I'm trying to bring to life. I know that I'm gonna run this project, but I need someone to finish that 10% or do the 10% of the work that I don't like. So I'm gonna find a partner. I'm gonna go to a buddy, colleague, a coworker, a friend, and bring them in on my team and let them know, hey, we're gonna do this together. Here's what you're responsible for. Here's what I'm responsible for, and here's what we're going to work together on. And as long as you set those goals in the beginning, up front, you're not really going to have a problem with that. The benefit to partnering with somebody is you're partnering with someone whose strengths are going to be your weakness. Right? If I'm good at presenting, but I'm really bad at the analytical and creative side of things, then I'm gonna find somebody who's in that, who, who excels in that area, but is afraid of the public speaking or vice versa, okay? Hey, I wanted to take a quick minute and interrupt this episode for a second. I hope you're enjoying what you've heard thus far. Are you a sales professional or do you manage a team of sales professionals? I imagine you know someone who struggles with complacency. I'm talking about the sales rep who has all the tools to be a top performer, but just can't seem to get past the mental hurdle that is holding them back. I completely understand and I relate with you. That is why I've created a detailed approach on how to get out of this stage of complacency and put yourself in position to achieve your next sales goal. Be sure to visit my website, catapultingcommissions.com. Once there, you can find the link to pick up a copy of my international best-selling book, Catapulting Commissions. Now, let's get back to our show. Another way to take care of that 10% that's preventing your ideas from coming to life, and this is really simple, simplify, reverse engineer, break down the activity. Identify what the 10% of your idea that is going to hold you back. In your new idea, if you have something there that you don't like, you know you're not going to do, it's just not important enough for you to learn how to take that task on, eliminate it, right? How do you eliminate it? You break it down. Is it crucial to the success of the project? And if the answer is yes, it's crucial to the success of the project, then start with that first, okay? So instead of going from zero to 90, start at the 10% mark and get that done first, and then the next, the next 90% will be much easier to achieve. So again, identify that 10% process, identify what you don't like, and say, here's what I don't like, here's what I don't want to do. And either one of two things, either A, I'm going to outsource it and have somebody do it who does it better than me, or B, I'm going to do it first. Okay. And the last 10% of why your brilliant ideas are never coming to life it's a lack of effective scheduling, okay? We are often overworked, overconsumed, and highly stressed out. The higher you get in the industry of sales, as you start to climb the ranks of sales leadership and you run an organization or you run a team or your income, the stakes are higher, right? I mean, I think I remember my first commission salaried sales job was, you know, not a lot of money. And as I climbed the ranks, the jobs got harder, was more stressful. Okay. Either I'm managing and creating my schedule or my schedule is managing me. My schedule is creating the life it wants on my time and on my standards. How do I control that? How do I effectively schedule my life so that 10% doesn't hold back the 90% I've already created, okay? It's effective scheduling. You have to have a plan for every moment in your life, right? I recently 
was interviewed on a podcast show, and we talked about success habits. And what is it that I do that gives me direction on my daily activities? And what I do, I thought was really simple. However, I found out not many people do. So I'm sharing it with you today. So how do I get my goals from 90% or my projects from zero to 90 to zero to 100? I micromanage my time. I micromanage my schedule. I have a really regimented schedule or really, yeah, I guess a really regimented schedule at home. There's a certain time I wake up every day. Rain, shine, no matter what time I go to sleep, I wake up at that time. Okay. I typically start every morning with a dedicated time to myself, personal development, Sports Center, got to be honest, I love Sports Center, but I would say it's probably, you know, 50 50 between personal development and catching up on sports. It's just my thing I do in the morning, it's how I catch up, it's how I go about my day. But from that point on, every hour of every day is accounted for and calculated. If I'm going to rest and relax and do nothing, it's in my schedule. If I'm going to sit and have a phone call for 45 minutes or an hour with one of the members of my team, it's in my schedule. If I'm going to be available for phone calls or, or unsolicited requests for feedback, it's in my schedule. If I'm going to read a clinical study or read something on social media, it's in my schedule. Everything about my day is regimented, scheduled to a T. It's the only way I function. And since I've implemented that, the amount of projects I have that are 90% done are significantly less. I bring a lot of projects to completion now by simply, A, outsourcing, B, finding a partner that I could sell the vision to, C, I simplify and reverse engineer, and I look at ways to start with the simple steps I've identified first and make it manageable, or D, I've effectively micromanaged my schedule to the minute. And I challenge you, just one of those four, if you implement one of those four strategies in your sales leadership process this week, you're going to find that your success rate of the project or goal you're working on this week is going to go a little bit higher. Okay? And now I'm not here to say that you can't have fun and you can't just sit there and be lazy, right? If that's the life you want to live, that's great. Schedule it, plan it, okay? I know that there's a certain, I guess there's a certain flow to my life on the weekends. I know that if I'm gone Monday through Friday or I've been putting in 12, 14, 16, 18 hour days, Monday through Friday, that typically on that weekend, I have either date night date day or or some time that is completely committed to my marriage and my relationship right i know that my wife enjoys catching up on some of her tv shows cooking breakfast together and just spending a few moments together uninterrupted no social media no phone right just quality time you know what that's in my schedule it's not clear it's not like oh i'm going to watch this tv show but it does say from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m., 3 p.m., whatever the time is, time with wife. That's it. That's the extent of my schedule. Whatever she wants to do, I want to do, right? But you have to have that stuff in your schedule. You have to take advantage of the time you have. The amount of hours we have in a day is the same amount of hours that the people we look up to have in their day. It's the same amount of hours that the most successful people in the world have in their day. What makes them uberly successful and us averagely successful right how do people excel and others fail right it's a it's a concept to me that i have a really hard time of understanding because when i look at people who fail or quote say they failed right they've only failed because they quit they've only failed because they're not managing their time it's not a skill set that prevents them from failing okay so Working on that scheduling component and adding it to your business is going to help bring your projects to life. Now, let's talk about projects that don't ever come to life, okay? If you're an outside salesperson, I'm sure at a certain point in time, you've said, hey, I'm going to do some marketing, whether it's emails, mailers, door-to-door knocking, something, 
and you're like, yeah, I need to do it, but you never do it. You have an idea for it. You get it to 90%. You don't finish the 10%. Find a partner. Outsource it. Have someone else write the emails for you. There's ways to get it done that you just want it done. And when you outsource something, done is better than perfect. Okay? I just want my project complete because once it's complete, at least it's out to the world versus, hey, I'm going to hold this in and make it perfect, perfect, perfect. And that idea is holding us back. If you don't know how to get your project to life and you're looking for some help or you need a little more clarity on today's show, go ahead and catch, connect with me, reach out to me on social media, use the hashtag catapulting commissions, send me a DM. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to, to give you some feedback and share with you, even if it's a few sentences. I've learned that when I have projects or, or I, the people that I'm listening to on social media or podcasts or YouTube videos, when I reach out to them, they're pretty receptive. And you know what? I, don't, I find it only fair that I return the favor back. So, all right, guys, that does it for today's show. Again, don't allow the 10% to prevent your ideas from coming to life. Okay, your brilliant idea is only failing because we haven't executed the last 10%. You're great, zero to 90. You are the best going from zero to 90. Be the best in the last 10%. All right, guys, thanks for your support. Well, that does it for today's episode on Catapulting Commissions with Anthony Garcia. If you found some value in today's show, please be sure to head over to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. Don't forget to subscribe to Catapulting Commissions. That way you get notified of new episodes every week. Lastly, please take a screenshot of today's show and share it on Instagram. Every week, I'll be giving away a signed copy of my best-selling book to one person who tags me at Anthony P. Garcia 99 and includes the hashtag catapulting commissions. Thank you for your time and I look forward to helping you achieve higher commissions. <laughs>